السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Firstly, there is no need to praise me because in all honesty, we are nobodies. The only day we will be a somebody is if on the day of judgment, Allah gives us our book in the right hands. May Allah give that to us. Before that, nobody can ever claim to be a somebody. And if they do, they are actually a nobody. فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ اتَّقَى Don't ever try to blow your own trumpet. Allah alone knows who is the one who has taqwa and close to Allah. You and I will never know. Amongst us, there are some unsuspecting. You would never imagine that they didn't miss a salah of the hajjud. And you and I may treat them in a negative way and we would lose. And the same applies the opposite where you find someone outwardly extremely pious, but they are far away from the fear of Allah and the concern of the day of Qiyamah. One of the most powerful pieces of advice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we are talking today about his seerah. One of the most powerful pieces of advice, and we are talking about his seerah, is whoever believes in Allah and the last day. Truly, you know what that actually means? It means whoever is worried about the day of judgment, are you really worried? Do you believe that everything you say or do and every cent you earn or spend is going to be taken account of? If you do and you really do, you would only utter something very good and brilliant from your mouth or keep quiet. There's no third option for a person who truly has piety. So anyone from whose mouth that which is abusive or vulgar or immoral or hurtful, hateful, that which is divisive comes out. Wallahi, I swear by the Lord of the worlds who created the heavens without pillars. They do not have the fear of Allah and they are not conscious of the day of judgment. They have forgotten. May Allah grant me a constant reminder of the fact that I have to stand in front of him and answer for everything I do. May this tongue never ever be used to abuse a soul because I follow and I want to follow the sunnah of the most beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who never ever belittled or insulted or abused anyone. May Allah Almighty protect us. So this is why I say, I don't want to speak about myself and I don't like others to say things about me and I don't want someone to defend me. I don't want them to do so. Because it's Allah Almighty who will judge and decide and that's it. I want to come straight to the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You see, at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, people insulted him, they abused him, they said about him, they did whatever. From the minute he decided to call towards the truth and they saw the weak, they saw the downtrodden, they saw the people of Makkah like Bilal ibn Rabah, Khabbab ibn al-Arat radiyallahu anhum turn towards the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What did they do? His own kith and kin, his own family members began to insult him, abuse him, accuse him. Yet a moment before that, he was known as as sadiq al-Amin. He was known as the most truthful, the most honest, the most trustworthy. A moment later, they began to say he's a liar, he's a... Na'udhu billah. Allah says, Subhanallah Rabbil Alameen. Allah says, we know, we know that what they are saying is hurtful. We want you to know that they do not belie you, but rather they have denied out of whatever their qualities are, their wrongdoings. The Prophet ﷺ was more saddened by the fact that they didn't listen to his message. His own kith and kin. Imagine I talk to someone related to me 
and I tell them to worship Allah alone and now they start swearing me and abusing me as a result. Don't worry. It's okay. It's a good sign. The prophets of Allah. This evening I heard the most melodious verses. I always enjoy Masjid salam because of our Imam. And you are fortunate not just one, you have so many. One of the most amazing is our Imam Qari Sufyan. The recitation, MashaAllah Tabarakallah, Allahumma Barik Lahu. The recitation in Maghrib. I was floating straight into the meaning. Inna Allah as soon as I heard that, I thought to myself, Allahumma, Allahumma, oh Allah, oh Allah, oh Allah, choose us as well. Choose us as well. What does it mean? It means Allah has chosen. Allah, Allah chose who? Inna Allah as Adam wa Nuhan wa ala Ibrahim wa ala Imran ala al alameen. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allah chose Adam. Allah chose him above the others. Allah chose who else? Nuh. Allah chose who else? Allah chose Ibrahim. The family of Ibrahim. The family of Imran. Allah says, I chose them. Allah chose them above everyone else. Allahu Akbar. May Allah choose us. May Allah choose us to do the work. How? When Allah says he chose you, did he make them rich? No, he didn't. What else? They were beyond our imagination in contentment, but they may not have even been followed by a few. Ibrahim alayhi salam, how many accepted his message? Wallahi, almost nil at the beginning. To the degree that Allah says, فَآمَنَ لَهُ لُوطُ Lut alayhi salam accepted the message. Imagine, so few people that the names were mentioned. Nuh alayhi salam, how many? Allah says, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فَلَبِتَ فِيهِمْ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَّا خَمْسِينَ عَامًا We sent Nuh to his people. He stayed with them for a thousand years, less fifty, nine hundred and fifty years. He called his people. How many accepted? Wallahi. The smallest narration says eleven. The lowest number. The highest number says eighty. Let's take eighty. That means less than ten every hundred years can you imagine these are people whom allah says inna allah astafa adam wa nuhan allah chose them subhanallah allah chose them how many accepted it's not got to do with how many they are it's got to do with you and your connection with allah are you adopting what allah has asked you or not may allah grant us ease i want to tell you something when Allah makes mention of the stories of the prophets in the Quran, it is in order to give comfort and solace and in order to strengthen the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions and all of us. Allah Almighty says, Every time we mention the stories of the prophets, in these stories is that which will strengthen your heart. Because when you see someone similar who was a messenger, although Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is higher than them, they went through challenge upon challenge. Those were the chosen of Allah. Do you want to know if you are chosen by Allah? Take a look at how many challenges you have in your life. Allah says, In Allah idha ahab abdan ibtalahu. When Allah loves his slave, he has a lot of challenges, a lot of tests. Different types of tests. Ma min nabiyin illa wa ra'al ghanam. A part of the seerah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us there has never been a messenger except that he was a shepherd at some point in his life. Shepherd with what? Wallahi shepherd with sheep and livestock. Allah trained them literally to say, you know what? You are going to have to speak to human beings and call them towards goodness. Speak to these animals. Speak to these animals and call them towards good. You will find at times that you have to be very patient. Ask those who are farmers amongst us. Allah grant us goodness. One sheep missing, one cow gone, they have a sleepless night. Right? Allah says, مَا مِن نَبِي إِلَّا وَرَعَ الْغَنَمْ Why? Because you're going to need to have a lot of patience. A lot of patience. Khalid ibn al-Walid ibn al-Mughira radiyallahu anhumah 
killed from among the Muslimin. Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam never gave up on him, not once. He became known as Sayfullah, Allahu Akbar. He became known as the sword of Allah. What did that sword do prior to turning to Allah? Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Ya Khalid, inna al-Islam ya jubbu ma qabla." Oh Khalid, Islam will delete whatever bad you've done before you entered the fold. I had a youngster who came to me and told me. I want to come out of Islam and come back in Islam. Is it okay? And I'm thinking to myself, what an absurd question. I said, why? He says, because I'm so jealous of those who revert to Islam. I've committed so many sins. I don't know what to do for them. They just have to say, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they are in and clean. I want to be clean. Let me go out and come back. I said, do you know what? Don't worry, you covered. Intelligent lighty, right? I said, don't worry, you're covered. Why? Because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Atta ibu min adhambi kamal la dhambala." The one who repents from sin is equivalent to the one who has no sin. Subhanallah. So don't worry, make tawbah, you get the same by the will of Allah. If Allah can delete the evil done by a disbeliever when he accepts Islam, do you not think that the one who is so merciful can give better to the one who's a Muslim? Let me explain. What do we say when we start recital of the Quran or anything important? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Similarly, Surah Al-Fatiha. How does it start? Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. And then? الرحمن الرحيم رحمن رحيم رحمن is a mercy that encompasses the disbelievers and those who do not deserve the mercy of Allah. Allah says we still have mercy on them. الرحمن الرحيم is a special quality of mercy only for the believers. If Allah has that, come on, make tawbah, my brothers, my sisters, turn to Allah. The ummah is bleeding. The ummah is bleeding. Allah says, "Wadkuru ni'mat Allahi alaykum." Remember the favor of Allah upon you. Don't forget it. What is the favor? My biggest favor is I'm an ummati of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Your biggest favor. What does that mean? That means anyone else who says. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا رسول الله والله if I don't feel that that person is my brother or sister there is something wrong with my iman. One might argue what if they belong to this sect and that sect and this whatever. For as long as they have uttered that shahada they have entered the door known as the Dean of Allah. We acknowledge the differences thereafter. We will study them. We will talk about them. We will say this one is right, and in our knowledge, this one is not right. And whatever you'd like to say, but you need to remember they have uttered the shahada. If you do not feel that bond, there is something wrong with you. No matter how long that beard is, it's a fact. My brothers and sisters, the ummah is one. We are bleeding because shaitan. When Allah says, "Remember the favor upon you." Has done the opposite for us. Let me tell you how. وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا Remember the favor of Allah upon you when you were enemies fighting one another. And by the fadl and mercy of Allah, He made you love one another as brothers in Allah. We became family in Allah. My bond with you is thicker than the bond of blood. I have a habit. If I meet anyone, I have love for them, even if they have hate for me. Because you know what they say, the shahada. Who knows? One day the man will regret what he did. It's okay. I don't need it in my heart. My heart needs to be cleansed. You can't have it against your own brother. It's a quality that we should strive for because Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself told his companions. We're talking of the sira, aren't we? He says, "You want to see a man from Jannah? That man." They wanted to find out what's happening. They didn't find him making more ibadah and more everything. They were inquisitive until they found out that the man said, "What I do every night is at night I take out every ill feeling, negative feeling against anyone that I have in my heart." That was the quality. Can't you try to do that? And if that is the case, and you definitely try to do that, wallahi, you feel love. Love fi sabilillah. 
Love, even when you want to correct someone, you choose the most blessed way. Let me tell you something. Allah says about the kuffar. Allah says, Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal maw'idati al hasana wajadilhum billati ya ahsan. Allah says, call towards the path of Allah with wisdom. With what? With wisdom. And with a good way, a beautiful way. Nice reminder so that you can attract people towards it. Think about what you have and how you want to convey it. To have knowledge is one thing, but to have wisdom is something even beyond. Some people have a lot of knowledge. They don't know how to convey it. Some people have little knowledge. They convey it in a beautiful way. So everyone thinks that they are more knowledgeable because they know how to convey it. If Allah is telling us to talk to the people of the book and the kuffar with wisdom, how do you think we should be speaking amongst one another when we are brothers? What? You need to apply even more of that. Look at another verse of the Quran. وَلَا تُجَادِلُوا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا بِالَّتِي أَحْسَنُ Allah says, don't ever debate with the people of the book except with that which is the best. إِلَّا بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ I want to talk to the people of the book. Allah says, hang on, choose the best way because you are holding such a powerful message. You don't just come and throw it at someone. You deliver it in the beautiful package that there is for them to come make dua for them. Before you go to them, ask Allah while you are talking to them and pray for them after you've spoken to them. You're a true believer. You care. لَأَنْ يَهْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجُلًا وَاحِدًا خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْ حُمْرِ النَّعَمْ we're all after a lot of material items of the world. It's not wrong to be after it, but Allah says, you need to know there are limitations. More than all of that in value is if Allah used you to guide one person, one person, one. If Allah used you to guide one person, it's better than the material items of the world. It's better than the best of conveyance, which was the red camel. How did Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam address his people? How did the prophets of Allah address their people? Lut Alayhi Salam. He was calling those who were involved in the act of homosexuality or homosexual acts, which is an abomination and haram in Islam and in all other Semitic faiths. When he spoke to them, he kept on telling them, Ya Qawmi, Ya Qawmi, O oh my people, O oh my people, this is very bad. Look at the respectful terms. Who was he talking to? He was talking to those who were engaged in something that Allah Almighty has made prohibited. And that is the act of homosexual behavior. So Allah Almighty says, do you really want to help the people know how to talk to them? It's part of the seerah. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah says, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. I'm thinking of how we are amongst one another. And Allah is saying that it is because of the mercy of Allah that you are lenient upon them. Lenient upon them. When he sends Abu Musa al-Ash'ari and Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiyallahu anhumah to Yemen, he says, بَشِّرَا وَلَا تُنَفِّرَا وَيَسِّرَا وَلَا تُعَسِّرَا you are going to Yemen. You're going to call the people towards Allah. Make things easy for them. Don't make it tough. Give them good news. Don't doom them. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Why? That's how they came to Allah. That's how they came to the deen. Today, the majority of us are struggling to obey the commands of Allah, to get up for Salatul Fajr, to make five Salat, to dress in hijab. Majority of us are struggling with so much to do with bettering ourselves. If we are going to fight one another, we are going to lose a generation. We're going to lose a generation. There are people out there waiting to attend a gathering like this only because they want to be happy to be a Muslim who has an identity, belonging. I belong to the Ummah. I visit countries where People are far from the deen in this country. We are so fortunate. We have freedom of worship in the correct sense. In some places, they only have lip service in that direction. And if you were to have an event like this, they would pay money, 200 pounds to, uh, sorry, 200 rands to attend. And they would attend in their tens of thousands. 
only because they want to be a part of the ummah desperately brothers and sisters we're living in a very dirty world out there acknowledge it be 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 understanding of the reality go easy on the people appreciate the ulama all of them the hardest and the harshest and the most easiest as members of the public never mess your tongue with the debates among the scholars leave it for them it's okay you need to be out of it because you know what don't leave the scholars they will benefit you if any scholar is benefiting you benefit from them but they are human i'm a human if i said or did something that's wrong may allah forgive me i am up for correction at any time today and any other day and sometimes it's just a misunderstanding you don't know and nowadays it's not even true i'm surprised to find out what i'm supposed to have done and i didn't even do it and they say oh is it they say but they're talking about you oh me oh really that's what's happening we're living in an age where the truth and falsehood is so mixed that you don't even know what's true and what's false watch your tongue and go easy on the others people are struggling with their own belief in allah in our families quietly in the room and you don't know people from pious homes whose parents sometimes have blinked their eyes for a moment away from their children are losing those kids why i blinked my eye for a minute i didn't notice what my daughter was doing subhanallah go easy you should be excited no matter what gathering there is of the deen go participate go and participate ulama who speak hard and harsh if you want go and participate if that's what helps you go because that is going to benefit the ummah i'm not looking at me it's not my shop that i must tell people come here only it's a big thing it's the deen of allah it belongs to the entire ummah another verse i heard by the same qari this evening وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِمَنْ Allah says, We have not sent you, O Muhammad sallam, except as a mercy. For who? For who? He didn't stop there. لِلْعَالَمِينَ For all the worlds. Everyone. You are a mercy for everyone. Wallahi, we are not even a mercy for our own community. We are not a mercy for our own homes. We are not a mercy within ourselves. What seerah? What an insult. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will recognize you because of so many factors. You reckon he's going to recognize you. Subhanallah. We are weak. I always say, if you can't help someone, no problem, but don't harm them. I can't help you, my brother. I'm so sorry that I really can't. My hands are tied or whatever else. But I'm not going to harm you, not me. No way. Not this tongue. Why? Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir you really whoever truly believes in allah and is concerned about the day of reckoning only say that which is brilliant or remain silent i'd rather be quiet that doesn't mean don't correct someone when they're going wrong correct them but in a beautiful way with hikmah you're supposed to use hikmah with the kuffar using hikmah with the muslimin is mimbabi awla it's more important more important I remember one scholar who used derogatory terms against another in a public space. And when they asked him, Sheikh, you're supposed to be such a great grand person. He says, I'm doing his Islah. So another scholar told him who was older than him that actually you need your Islah done. Why? Because you can never do Islah in a manner that is not even prescribed by the same Nabi. Of Rahmah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He never did it that way. He never insulted someone, belittled them, and then say, I'm just doing his islah. I mean, are you more pious than the Prophet? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Go easy. What are you teaching the public? They look at a scholar and they spit. They spit. I've had it to me. Youngsters. I met a youngster in Medina. And assalamu alaikum. I have a habit of greeting everyone. I don't care what color you are, what size you are, what shape you are, what money you have. All assalamu alaikum. How are you, my brother? And so on. If a sister were to greet me based on the fact that they might have learned a thing or two, salam, I say, wa alaikum assalam. Keep, keep moving. Or sometimes they say, jazakumullah khair, whatever. I was surprised. Our own people. I greeted him, salamu alaikum. He spat in my face. Literally spat. I told him, jazakallah khair. What do you want me to say? Jazakallah khair. 
My tarbiyah was done inshallah by someone who is a disciplinarian. Disciplinarian. We lived in the house. Every movement of ours was whooped <laughs> into being straight. Literally, that's how we grew up. Say, if you're going to come and spit at me, I'm not going to spit back at you. Do you know why? I'll never lose the good character that I have because of your bad character. Never. You won't find me swearing someone who swore me. I'll tell him, brother, I forgive you. And you know what? You're going to do it again, forgiven in advance. And you know what? On the day of judgment, also forgiven, inshallah. You know why? What you did, it hasn't impacted on me at all. If anything, it's a sign of the acceptance of Allah. They did it to the Prophet wasallam. They did it to the other Anbiya. يُبْتَلَ الْأَنْبِيَاءُ ثُمَّ الْأَمْثَلْ فَالْأَمْثَلْ There is my Nabi sallallahu He says, the people with the greatest tests are the prophets and then the ones who are closer to them and closer and so on. The closest and the next and the next. So be ready. Has someone ever insulted you? No. Well, there's something you're doing that's wrong. Something wrong. But if I said if someone hasn't insulted you yet, something wrong, someone hasn't belittled you. I'm a Muslim, for example, wearing hijab. Someone has to laugh at me. Someone has to scoff at me. Just for Allah to allow you to go through an ibadah known as sabr. Allah wants it to happen. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa went through that his whole life. He didn't have to. Allah says, we chose them. For what? To be better. But they went through bigger challenges than you and I. Worse than that is, you know what question we just said? We asked now, has someone ever laughed at you, mocked at you, harassed you. But worse than that is, have you harassed someone? Have you mocked someone? Have you insulted? If that's the case, then that is now a different ball game. Because now you're entering territory that even Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned about. May Allah bless us. May we have the most beautiful tongues. Occupy your tongue in the dhikr of Allah. You won't regret it. Occupy your tongue in the dhikr of Allah. You will never regret it. My brothers and sisters, those of us who have lost loved ones, and I know this might sound like a diversion, but it's not. You lost a child. You lost a spouse. You lost someone. Remember the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ is such that in it and in reading it and going through it, there's a lot of comfort. A lot of comfort. Allah sent the stories of the prophets in the Quran as revelation so that they can be comfort for Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he gave us Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's entire life seerah in order for it to be a comfort for us. Not to say that the other stories are not a comfort, but this one here is an amazing comfort. If ever you're going through problems, yes, you make salah, adhkar, close to, but read the seerah, it will help you. When you see that the most beloved unto Allah went through bigger challenges than you and I, Wallahi, it will help you to realize, you know what, I'm okay. I thank Allah. I thank Allah. There was a time when I used to complain about a specific problem I had in my life. Major thing. Until I realize that I need to release myself. I've read so much. I've learned so much. Let me thank Allah. Oh Allah, I thank you for this problem. لَكَ الْحَمْدُ لَكَ الشُّكْرُ لَكَ الْحَمْدُ وَلَكَ الشُّكْرُ يَا وَاجِدُ جَلَّ جَلَالُكَ Subhanallah. I thank you, oh Allah. You know why? This is a major problem, but Alhamdulillah, you've given me the strength to go through it. I thank you for it. And then you find you're at ease. You're comfortable. People can say what they want, do what they want. And you just get easy. Someone looks at your face and say, but are you the same guy that this happened to, that happened to? Say, oh yeah, yeah, it is. They'll be surprised. This man is so happy, so excited. You know what? It's Allah. Allah is the only one who can give you happiness, contentment in the true sense. When you thank Allah for the challenges that came in your life, something major happened. You lost something. Alhamdulillah. Firstly, why? On the day of Qiyamah, a caller will call. أَيْنَ الَّذِينَ كَانُوا يَحْمَدُونَ اللَّهَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ where are those who used to praise Allah in difficulty and in ease, in ease and in hardship? Where are those who praised Allah upon all conditions? They will be taken out and they will be granted VIP status. They will enter Jannah amongst the first. Amongst the first. Why? They thanked Allah. You're going through a hassle. Every one of us has to go through it. 
My brothers and sisters, you know, we come back every year. Because when we do come, we only have 30 to 40 minutes. We've got to come back next year for another 30, 40 minutes. May Allah bless us. Nonetheless, the point today is for us to watch our tongues, no matter what. When you hear two people at war and you're a third party, you know what you need to do? Make sure that your tongue is not messed in the wrong direction. That's all. That's all. Nowadays, we have social media. One touch of a button can spoil your jannah. You don't know the person you're talking about. If they are close to Allah, man aada li waliyan faqad aadantuhu bilhar. Allah says, you messing with a friend of mine, I announce war against you. A lot of the people who are keyboard warriors, wallahi, their lives are upside down. They have challenges in their homes. They have major disasters. Allah gives them a time and then Allah doesn't hold back. The wali of Allah, we don't know who they are. They could be the unsuspecting uncle or brother or someone sitting next to you right now. Could be, who knows? Speak to people with respect. Don't despise and belittle. No matter what. You want to speak to the kuffar. I remember September 11 happened. And I'm only saying this because Mullah Suleiman mentioned this. He mentioned something. September 11 happened. I was already graduated working and I decided these people are calling us terrorists. They're calling Islam names. They're calling the Prophet ﷺ names. They, it was painful to see this and to hear it. And I said, I want to prove to the non-Muslim world that Islam is indeed a heavenly faith and it has some of the most amazing teachings. Now how to get them to read it? So there was an entire study that we did as to methodology of da'wah, how to talk to the people, what to say to attract someone who hates Islam because my job was only to try and reduce that hatred. Today I sit and I watch and trust me, by the father of Allah, something we worked on 23 years ago. Today I can tell you, you know what? I think there's a lot of non-Muslims who today, they acknowledge that no, Islam is a good religion. The teachings are really amazing. I'm not saying it's my effort, but I'm saying it's a collective effort. We've all done so much. We thank Allah. May Allah continue to use us. I might be covering one part of our duty as an ummah of the da'wah. I might be covering certain people. I normally tell people I teach grade one and two. After that, you can take over. Which means someone who's not a Muslim. Yes, I've specialized in that. Someone who's weak and far. You have a habit. The bottle, the drugs, pornography, whatever else it might be. Inshallah, yeah, come, we'll help you. We love you because we love the you without those bad habits. We're going to try and help you eradicate it. Long back, I used to be a guy, back in the day when we first were students, we used to throw people out. These guys, they are right off. Until we learned, nobody's a right off. Actually, you are the right off. You've written them off. You're writing everyone off. If you are a murabbi and you are concerned for the ummah, you see a drunkard with a bottle, the first thing you do, you make dua, oh Allah, help this man and bring him to the masjid five times a day. Then you go to him when he's a little bit sober, talk to him, show interest. You might find that there was a problem in his life that caused this. If you were to help him, he might come into salah and you will have the reward that I was talking about. Guiding one person is better for you than everything you've amassed. But what happened? Concern. Today, never mind the people who are sinful and so on, who are from the ummah, but committing sins, they are far away. Very few people are concerned about them. We want to take out decent Muslims who are five times salah, and we still say, that guy's not a Muslim, don't worry, he's just a hypocrite in sheepskin, you know. We've taken out the proper people. We're supposed to be bringing the wolves and converting them into whatever they're supposed to be. Rather... We're taking the proper people who are Muslimin, who would be an asset to the Ummah and removing them. We can't do this. Wallahi, you know what? We all, including myself, we need to reconsider the way we care for the Ummah. We are losing, we are losing, literally, we are losing a chunk because we are not thinking of them. We are not considering the challenges of the age. We are living in the age of social media. It's an age, it's a reality. Don't fool yourself. It's a reality. Those children out there, do you care for them? Do you really believe they are part of the ummah? If you do, congratulations. 
Let's hold hands and let's help them. May Allah Almighty grant us all goodness. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.